Last lesson, we learned to use stoichiometry to answer questions like, how much water can be made by reacting 30 grams of hydrogen? In this lesson, we'll discuss two complications that can arise during stoichiometry problems, limiting reactants and percent yield. Suppose you are baking some pies with a limited number of ingredients. You might ask, how many pies can I make with the ingredients that I have? One of the ingredients will be used up first, that one will be limiting. This ingredient will dictate how many total pies you can bake. Now imagine that while you're assembling the pie, your pet lion startles you and causes you to spill half the pie mix across the floor. This would decrease the number of pies you can make. In other words, it would decrease your percent yield. These same two situations happen during chemical reactions, and you'll need to be able to complete stoichiometry calculations given those complications. On this slide, I'll outline how to deal with these complications and how to know you will need to. Then we'll look at each one in detail. If a reactant is limiting, then it's used up before the other reactants are. If a question ever gives you the amount of more than one reactant, you will know you are in a limiting reactant problem. You will need to solve the stoichiometry problem for each reactant, then determine which reactant creates the least amount of product. That reactant is limiting and the other reactants are in excess. Moving to percent yield problems, when a chemical reaction is performed in real life, it is rarely 100% efficient. Sometimes the chemist will spill their materials. Other times there are side reactions which might occur to decrease the amount of product created. By calculating the percent yield, you are calculating the efficiency with which a real reaction was performed. If a question ever gives you the amount of a reactant and the amount of a product, then you know you are living in a percent yield problem. To calculate the percent yield, Perform the stoichiometry problem as you would normally to calculate the theoretical yield. Then take the amount of product given in the equation, which is the actual yield, and divide it by the theoretical yield to calculate the percent yield. To imagine a limiting reactant problem in real life, imagine some people want to ride tandem bicycles. While this sounds super fun, each tandem bicycle needs two riders according to this reaction equation. Suppose we had a situation where six people wanted to ride, but we only had two tandem bicycles. Two people would be left without bicycles. We call the bicycles the limiting reactant and the people are in excess. Let's try it with a real chemistry problem. If 30 grams of uranium reacts with 75 grams of fluorine, according to the equation below, which reactant is limiting. To solve this, first do the stoichiometry dance to convert 30 grams of uranium to grams of uranium hexafluoride, UF6. Then convert 75 grams of fluorine to grams of uranium hexafluoride. I'd like you to pause the video and try it out. To convert 30 grams of uranium to grams of uranium hexafluoride, first multiply by the molar mass of uranium in blue, then multiply by the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. Lastly, multiply by the molar mass of uranium hexafluoride. From 30 grams of uranium, we can make 44.4 grams of uranium hexafluoride. Now convert 75 grams of fluorine to grams of uranium hexafluoride using the same method. In this case, we can make 694 grams. That's quite a bit more. This means the uranium will run out after only 44.4 grams of UF6 are made. Uranium is the limiting reactant and fluorine is in excess. Moving on to percent yield, Remember, you can spot a percent yield problem because amounts of reactant and product are both given in the problem. Percent yields are only calculated after a reaction has been performed in real life. While a perfect reaction will theoretically give 100% yield, in real life, this is rarely the case. 
To solve the problem, we'll do the stoic dance to calculate the theoretical yield, then compare it to the actual yield. Let's try it out. In this practice problem, a chemist reacts 100 kilograms of silicon dioxide and ends up with only 54.4 kilograms of silicon carbide. I'd like you to try setting this up yourself. First, you'll need to write a balanced chemical equation, then calculate the theoretical yield of silicon carbide. Pause the video, give it a try. The solution to this problem requires some extra conversion factors since our starting units are in kilograms. Notice that I convert from kilograms to grams in black before applying the molar mass in blue. I have to convert back to kilograms at the end because the problem gives the actual yield in kilograms. If you did your stoic correctly, your theoretical yield is 66.73 kilograms of silicon carbide. The theoretical yield will always be more than the actual yield. If it's not, you've made a mistake. In this case, we're good because we had 66 kilograms of silicon carbide, theoretically, which is more than the 51 kilograms uh, of actual yield. Now, put those two values into our equation for theoretical yield, and we get our percent yield of 77%.